for the webinar. My name is Hanif Mohammed, CEO here at Asian Institute of Design. Welcome back to many and welcome to the series of webinar hosted by Asian Institute of Design. We've been cover covering varied subjects ranging from AI, ML, uh, gaming, animation, design. We have some more lined up. We have we will be even covering on VFX as well. Uh, yes, before we start, some ground rules. Uh, kindly use the chat box for any questions directed towards the speaker. He will respond to you at his convenience. You, your line drops at any, at any point. Please use the same link to come back in. By whatever reason, if you're not able to come back, uh, don't worry. This is uh, recorded. We will we'll send you a link of the recorded version, or you can always follow us. By, you can, this is going live streamed on YouTube as well. Yes, uh, for people who, would, who don't know about us, we are the Asian Institute of Design. We are a progressive higher education institution since 2007. We've been offering undergraduate and uh, undergraduate professional diplomas in art, art design and art technology. We started as the first dedicated gaming institute of India, then known as Asian Institute of Gaming and Animation. We've been turning professional for the ABGC design industry. Our alumni have been contributing to leading blockbuster movies, games, uh, some of the uh, movies like Godzilla, Avengers, in fact, there have been alumni who be in the Oscar winning uh, teams of Jungle Book as well. Uh, in games, yes, uh, contributed, when I mean, alumni are contributing to what's uh, uh, Call of Duty, Red Dead Redemption, GTA 5, which is the world's biggest game so far, it crossed 1 billion in just three days. Students are working in, um, alumni are working in uh, across the world. We have been for our students in, uh, in Canada, Finland, Singapore, Malaysia, and many others. At uh, AIT, we have students across in across the, uh, India, from across India, almost 18 different states. Uh, at a given point of time, we have had international students from Korea, Japan, Russia, Netherlands, and many more. The AID Art Faculty offers programs in gaming animation. We will be introducing our VFX programs this year. Our design faculty offers programs in communication design, UI, UX. We will also be introducing spatial design this year. Tech faculty offers programs in ML, AI, in programming. Planning to introduce more programs and emerging technologies. Uh, this year, we're going, going online. Uh, uh, AIT's online programs are, will be launched in July. We are a fine blend between industry and academia. All our faculty comes from industry experience. They have worked on many, many uh, different titles. And, you know, they've been working with DreamWorks, Luxia Digital, Eccentrics, and so on. Uh, for any more details, please log on to www.asianinstituteofdesign.in. You can also follow us on, on our social media handles as well. Yeah. To introduce today's speaker, I mean, it gives me an extreme pleasure to introduce today's speaker, um, Bharat Metapalli. He is an alumni of AID. Nothing gives us more happiness than seeing our alumni uh, working in leading roles. He was a mechanical engineer from AIT. Then he joined the uh, Asian, Asian Institute of Gaming and Animation Bank. He did a special diploma in game art. He was then placed at Eccentrics as a 3D artist. From there, he moved to Technicolor, now a technical team lead. He worked on multiple, multiple titles, uh, but I cannot mention those titles here because all are on uh, NDA. And yes, let, let's listen to Bharat. Uh, about his journey of being a technical team lead. Uh, yeah, over to you, Bharat. Uh, my name is uh, Bharat, and uh, I've been working as a technical team lead in Technicolor. And uh, I've been working, and I have an experience of about a little over five years. and. Uh, it's been an amazing experience so far. I will just uh, walk you through on uh, how I have grown and how things have been so far for me from the very start of my education and to my career till today. So uh, to start with, I have started off studying mechanical engineering uh, in VIT Valor. 
I graduated from there and uh, pretty much at the end of the year, I realized that uh, my interest was more towards uh, cat designing. I, I used to make cars there, like we worked on some buggies uh, where I worked as a specialized in cat design, like for suspension and stuff. So that basically pushed me more towards some field that would give me an interest in modeling, designing and stuff. And after my research and everything, I sat down here at Ega. Uh, now it's called as uh, Asian Minister of Design. And uh, the people there were amazing and I had amazing tutors and we learned a lot. So thanks to them where we are right now. Then slowly as uh, time progressed, uh, I got placed in uh, Eccentrics. I worked there as a game artist for about a year. And uh, slowly I moved on from there to Technicolor. I joined Technicolor as a 3D artist. Then I moved on later to a technical art role. And uh, later as time progressed, I became a senior technical artist and then I became a technical team lead. I handle a team of technical artists and uh, we work on projects for the company. So uh, most of you might ask, uh, what is a technical artist and how you want to be a technical artist? So uh, one thing I would actually want to say is uh, it's, it's not a uh, rocket science or anything or not just technical artists, but anything to the matter of fact. All things come down to passion and interest. You're passionate about something and uh, you can definitely, definitely achieve it. So here, uh, one of the main key things I would want everyone to have is passion. Like if, and I'm hoping most of you guys are here or because you want to pursue your interest, your passion. So that's your first and main motive. That's an amazing thing. And here for technical artists, uh, one another key thing that would have to be there is uh, logical thinking. So it, it might not be just uh, work related or something. If you're good at logical thinking, you can actually improve and uh, work on this. That should not be an issue at all. And uh, lastly, let's say there's a lot of coding involved, a lot of uh, geometry involved. So it's good to have good understanding of mathematics. And that, that are like the bare minimum of a technical artist. And if you were to go and apply for a job as a technical artist, the basic requirements would be uh, like first they would expect you to have some programming knowledge. Maybe you might have learned something. Uh... Maybe you want to join a company and uh, like when you were working, like when you're studying in your school or college, you might have some classes that would be uh, C, C++ or something like that. They, they might give you a basic overview and I think you can add on to that and have a little more understanding. So that, that would be your bare start. And in the gaming industry, most of the softwares that uh, we make use of would be Maya or uh, let's say Max, Maya are most common used applications and they require uh, Python. So one another thing would be, you will have to be uh, good with Python. And if you have good understanding of game engines, that's actually a very, very good thing. And all in all, you should still have a good understanding of how to read a documentation of uh, any of the scripting languages or Let's say if you are working with a certain tool, you might be given a document and you should have an understanding on how to read it and understand it. That's, that's some of the basic things. On, uh, if you have experience with uh, the DCC applications, digital content creation applications like uh, Maya, Max, then you have Photoshop, Substance Painter, Designer, then uh, let's say this one, uh, ZBrush, then we have Blender as well. So these applications, if you have them, like if you know how to use them, if you have a basic understanding of them, that will actually give you a boost, like a heads up. Uh, that will push you much further. And in, in addition to these, uh, if you also have skills like uh, C++ or C Sharp, or if you have developed any small game, like even it might be as simple as making a tic-tac-toe. So that's, that's still fine. So if, if any, any experience that you might have will actually contribute when you're putting down your uh, profile resume to the company. And uh, maybe they might, uh, if you have worked on something like shadows or something called plugins, those, those will also add value to that thing. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping people have come across these things at some point in life. Maybe they might not have uh, uh, used it or they might not have looked at it in a very specific way, but even the slightest information would always uh, jump in and help.
Okay, uh, since I have some questions, I'll just uh, stop here and answer your question. So one of them asked me a question like, uh, what is the role of a game tester? And another one asked me a question, what's the difference between 3D Max and 3D Maya? Game tester is uh, more like someone who would be testing a game, looking for bugs. Let's say you have finished working on your game and you just want to identify if everything is working as expected. Uh, if you are running into any issues or if you have a certain set of sequences that you're running, if you have run into like, is everything working as expected when you have developed it? So either you can do it, like, but the person who developed, he might not have enough time or he might not have, uh, let's say, uh, like when you're working on this actual thing and if you were to do the same test, you might miss some things out. But if an external person comes in, uh, it would be much easier. So it would give a new exposure and uh, that's how game testers basically test the game, report the bugs, and then the developer will fix it for you. And coming to uh, Max and Maya, both, both are 3D modeling applications, but uh, both have their own differences and different companies uh, use different applications. Uh, earlier, I could say there are certain differences, but having worked with both of them, there are differences, but you can still work with either of them. It's uh, more like when I was a student, it would be more like uh, Maya is an animation related tool, whereas Max is more like for uh, modeling or hard surface kind of tool, but you can, you can do both. It's uh, up to your comfort and uh, it's up to the requirement of the project you work with. It's, act it's actually good to have an understanding on both. Both have their own perks and both have their downsides. So that's, that's that. Yeah, you, we do have uh, jobs in India. And uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are plenty of jobs in India. Okay, animation. So one of your persons asked me, uh, how is animation different in games and movies? I have not worked on movies per se, so I cannot fully answer your question. Uh, as in games, uh, certain a video is recorded or like it's called as mocap motion capture and then that is passed on to the team and they work with it so to keep it very very simple i can give you that information someone acts it on the screen and uh, then someone comes like you get it onto the computer and uh, you can just modify it and apply those animations to the character model you have made Yeah, uh, as an artist, you like having programming knowledge is always good, but uh, it's it's not something more of a mandatory requirement that you should have a lot of programming knowledge. You can have you can have a basic amount of knowledge which would uh, help you understand some basic things. And having uh, programming knowledge, being an artist, is more like a perk or more like a hobby. It's it's up to your personal interest. And uh, maybe that would jump in and help you where uh, if you are working on a certain task and uh, if you understand programming and you might come up with a tool that would make things easier for you. So something like that. So about uh, the programming language. Okay, so just to give you a very basic outline, uh, most of the game engines use the C++. So that's that's one of your core programming uh, requirements, the like skills you would have to have if you were planning on a game. Uh, but again, in Unity, you can do it with C Sharp. So these, these are like the main things and uh, there are some engines or some things you can develop with Python as well. So it, it's up to you, you are free. So you can choose, there are a lot of other options. Let's say if you really want, you can also make a game on a web page out of JavaScript. So that's that's possible too.
Uh, for a game tester, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I think if you have good communications and a good eye for bugs and looking for imperfections, I said that should give you a good start. So it's like you don't have to have a lot of uh, set qualification per se, but as long as you can have you can communicate well and uh, uh, you can identify bugs easily, quickly, and uh, and if you have a broader interest on different genres of game, that that's that's something you can start off with, and uh, once you jump in, you can see how things go. So, uh, yeah, since you're working, like studying at 12th, uh, you can start learning programming languages. You can also understand uh, how a game works, like, uh, and slowly, there are, there's, you, you have a lot of ahead of you. Uh, understanding computers, understanding how things work would actually give you a heads up because if you're developing a game, you should also look at optimizing and a lot of things. Uh, yeah, as an animator, uh, again, like whether you're an animator or whether you are a artist, if you have programming knowledge, that's actually a plus, but uh, your company would still expect you to have good animation skills. So if you have um, understanding of programming, that would give you basically a heads up where uh, I start actually, as uh, you, can, you can develop your own tools because in, I have friends who are animators and few of them know a little bit of Python and Mel, and uh, it's it's much easier for them to progress further because if they are working on a certain task and they assume that uh, they can make a repetitive task in the bot, they will just go ahead with it and that will just make things much easier and simpler for them. So a uh, game artist is a person who works on uh, game art, like developing and modeling and developing things. Uh, okay, so one of them have a question saying, uh, what is the difference between game artist and a technical artist? So here, uh, if you are a game artist, you'll be working on assets like creating art content, where uh, if you're working on an environment, let's say you'll be working on things that would be placed within the environment. Let's say if you're making a room, you'll have to make a model, a chair, a table, and a computer maybe, or something like that. And if you are a technical artist, you would be developing tools uh, that would help you develop these maybe, uh, or uh, maybe set up the entire thing on the, on the game engine, uh, end up going and optimizing it for the game, uh, trying out uh, what things work out, what don't. So, Game game artist is more on the lines of uh, developing, and uh, technical art is more on the lines of supporting and uh, taking things to the next level. So when you're working on a game, so one of them question, which are the most commonly used uh, softwares for game designing? So here, game designing is a very very broad uh, question. Uh, as a part of the game design, you would have to first uh, go and start off with concept, game concept. And uh, once you have created the concept, that has to be published. And uh, then it would go on to the next part where the past people will start developing the 2D, the concept into a 3D object. And there you would be using, uh, again, 3D applications like uh, maybe Maya, Max, or you can also go with Blender. There are, there are a few more, I guess. Uh, and once you go beyond that, then you would be integrating them into a game engine. And once you do a game engine, then you would also have to add sound or lighting and all of those things. And uh, yeah, it, it's a long process. So there, there are a lot of uh, other tools that would actually jump in and uh, that you would be making use of.
Uh, Shreyansh, can you please ask your question again? I don't see your question. So one of the person asked me a question for an experienced 3D person, how difficult would it be to jump to the technical side with no prior technical experience? So again, uh, I would say it would come down to the interest you have and uh, the skill at what rate you can understand and learn things and uh, how good are you at logical thinking? So if you're like, if you're someone who is good at logical thinking and uh, if you have, if it, it does not take you much longer to understand basics of programming, the concepts, and then start developing the tools, maybe give or take, uh, I would say maybe one month, two months should be a good start where uh, you can learn things and you can start developing tools and uh, maybe move your career from, let's say art to a technical background. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, I'm working with Unity only now for my design work. Do you think I should learn more game engines? Unity is a very, very good start. And uh, I, would, I would say uh, learning more is always good because each game engine has its unique ups and downs. For example, Unreal has blueprints, Unity does not, or at least Unity is still trying to catch, catch up there. So uh, I think uh, you can grab either of them and uh, First thing is to understand how things work and the, the, the flow of how things work do not uh, differ much. And one, once you understand that, uh, whatever it is, you will only have to make a very few adjustments. But again, if you were asking a question from a programming perspective, both those applications differ heavily in how you develop the code and stuff because one of them is C sharp, other one is C plus plus. That's again, that's a syntax part. Also, functionality wise, the way you call things and the way you apply, like develop shaders and materials, they are quite different. Uh, one of the questions is uh, I'm a Unity developer, will be. Will it be hard moving to Unreal CPP? Also, can you suggest me how I can start CPP related to games? Uh, so yeah, again, I would not say it would be much hard because uh, there is once if you are able to develop code in Unity, it should not be that difficult to move to C plus plus. Or once you understand the concepts and you go through the API of the Unreal documentation, that that would be a much uh, easier switch, I would say. Like there, there would be definitely differences because both have their, their ups and downs. Uh, for example, when I was uh, developing certain code for Unreal, I, I had a lot of back and forth where things did not work. And there were like some bugs that sometimes you feel like, okay, Unity is better, but there are again scenarios where you will feel like, okay, Unreal is more comfortable for me to use. So both, both the things have their uh, own differences and uh, yeah, def definitely give it a try. Uh, there's no harm in learning two things and uh, that, that would give you more understanding and more exposure on things. Okay, uh, so a few questions are also asking about the software. So I'll just uh, run on with a little more slides. I have maybe two left. And uh, quickly after them, we can jump back into the session and uh, we'll go on with our questions. So uh, now if you see, like we have the slide of skills and implementations of a technical artist. So one of the main things, again, uh, I would say is uh, the person should be good enough where uh, he can understand and discuss with uh, the both the art teams and the production teams, because when you're working on a certain project, you will be working with either of them. You have to learn, you have to adapt, and uh, you should know how to work with, because each project has its differences and uh, you have to adapt to those things. And uh, again, uh, all in all, you have to be a team player because when you're working on something, you should be working with uh, all your teammates as well. Like maybe they would be pitching you on a project where you'd be working with more than one people on the same project and you have to work together. So even, even that is kind of uh, an important thing. So uh, what are like uh, the basic roles of a technical artist? So one, one of the basic things is uh, writing a lot of code 
So you'll be developing uh, tools, maybe like scripts, and uh, you'll be writing perhaps uh, shaders or uh, optimizing levels for the game engine. Like it, it differs on the company you work with and what of what kind of work the company does. So uh, the technical artist role varies uh, to an extent depending on the company and company. Uh, you'd be basically uh, working or adjusting yourself to match their need and requirement. And uh, on the majority of the side, uh, you'll be acting like a like a bridge between both an artist and a pure programmer. So let's say if someone is working on a, an asset or like a level that has to be integrated and the programmer would just have to get it done. So you'd be the one optimizing the level for the programmer and passing it ahead or you'd be doing the entire thing and uh, you would ensure that the level you're pushing into the engine is perfect as expected. Uh, and uh, like when you're working on the scripts or code, it has to be very well organized, very clean. And uh, also let's say if you're starting off, make sure you start off documenting what you write. So if you are to look back at it at a later day, let's say you're working on a tool now and uh, you look back at it after maybe a couple of months or maybe a year then if you have documentation right there, it's uh, very easy to go through. So ideally you can just say it's like you have to comment your code or uh, you can have add doc strings within your code. So it makes it more easier for either you or anyone to read and go through to understand what the code does. Um, yeah, so again, like I said, uh, you would be working with a lot of projects and you have to understand how the project is, what they work on, and uh, develop any tools they might require. So th these are like the basic things as a technical artist. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's jump back to your uh, questions. So uh, one of the questions is, uh, is it necessary to learn all the softwares like ZBrush, Maya, 3ds Max, etc.? So hi, Nikhil. So is this something you're asking for a technical artist or is this for a game artist? So if it's for a game artist, uh, yes, it is required. And if it is for a technical artist, it's there is no compulsion that you have to know them, but knowing them is actually a very good head start. Uh, you don't have to be an expert at them, but uh, you should have a bare minimum knowledge on how things work and how it is so that when an artist comes up or when a team people like lead or someone comes up to you and says, I, I need a certain tool that would do this. So you should be in a position to understand those. So having an understanding is actually a bare minimum requirement and being very, very proficient in that is an additive, more like a, it's a bonus. Uh, so my question is uh, what programming language do you use? Uh, I develop uh, mostly on Python. Then uh, I also write uh, tools for uh, other applications like Unity, for example. So there I use uh, C Sharp and also for Unreal and uh, we use C++. Even if you're writing, you can use C++. Um, yeah, that, those, are, those are the pretty much things. And uh, Maya also supports Mel, but uh, personally I do not use Mel, but I, I still know how to write in Mel. So yeah, let's say if you want to put it on a very plain paper, it would be uh, you need Mel for Maya and uh, Python again for Maya. Python can also be used for Max. And Max has its own scripting called uh, Max Script. Um, yeah. Then, in terms of uh, developing more advanced tools, Maya still supports uh, plugins. That would be C++, or maybe you can also do it in C Sharp. Yeah. Th th those are like the main key things. And again, game engines still revolve around these things. So uh, my question is, as a fresher, what kind of roles in a studio will be will I be able to play in our department? So uh, if you're a fresher, you'll be joining maybe as a game artist or a game animator. Uh, so th these are like the basic things. And also you can, if you are very good at 2D sketching, you can also join as a concept artist. So. Uh, Again, once you join, um, let's say you'll be either working on a texturing part or let's say modeling part, or maybe both, uh, or maybe you might also fall into a rigging territory where you'd be working on a rig 
and uh, yeah it, it depends on again what kind of department you fall into and what kind of a project you fall into so yeah uh, so when before you enter the company you should define yourself on what you'll be working on so that's basically learn things and you fix one that interests you or something that you fall connection to and you just get more understanding of that and you, that's how you become Yeah, uh, so the question is, I have started with Photoshop as I'm in class 10. Is, so is it good? Uh, is it a good start to pursue career as a game artist? Uh, I would not say no. So uh, working as a game artist is always a good thing. But again, uh, if this is where your interest lies, you can always pursue it. And yeah, that's that's a good start. Again, uh, there, there are so many things. So go with go with what your passion tells you to do so don't don't let others uh, like if you want you can definitely take it but i'm not gonna put pressure on it so one question is uh, what are the common obstacles and challenges i faced as a lead and how much of a responsibility has grown from me being a technical artist to a lead uh, so yeah, let's say I'll, when I started off, I would be just handling maybe a project or two, and uh, I would be just working as a part of a team. Like I would not, I would be reporting to someone, and I would just have to. I'll have an assignment on me, and I just have to finish it, and that's it. Uh, but once you start becoming a technical lead, you have a team of technical artists under you, and you have to manage. You have to work with uh, multiple projects, and uh, you have to make sure everything is running as expected. So yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. One thing, it will give you a lot more exposure to multiple projects and uh, it's also good to progress in your career, yeah. I would not say it's a uh, stressful work because uh, end of the day, this is something I like. And this is something I'm doing out of my passion. So I, I don't feel stressed out or I don't feel vexed by working nonstop. There are days where uh, if let's say I am working on a code, I would want to work on it till I finish it or till I get to a point where I'm comfortable with. So end of the day, it is how I want to or how, how I feel, how, how uh, dedicated you as a person would be. So uh, yeah, again, like I said, uh, everything comes down to passion on how passionate you are at working. So things, things would be a breeze for you if that's the case. Yeah, if if you have any any of uh, doubts, you can uh, you can definitely drop an email. That that's always welcome. Uh, yeah. So a question is: uh, As a fresher, can I join a gaming studio as a rigging artist? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, there would be companies which would be expecting uh, a fresher as a rigger. So if, if there are certain openings, you can definitely join. There, there are no constraints there, yeah. Uh, so there is a question, is there a difference between environmental artist and a level designer? So I would not uh, say yes or no, because there, there are definitely differences. Let's say an environment artist would work on uh, assets placed within an environment and uh, a level designer would actually plan the entire level and also have to plan on the budget and stuff. So let's say a level designer would actually engulf an environment artist and he would also have to give tasks to an environmental artist. So yeah, if you look at the hierarchy, uh, it would be environment artist then a level designer. If the same person is doing both, he would be doing both the things. So yeah. So there's a question, programming tool a newbie must know in order to start in the industry as a programmer and an animator. Uh, if you're working as a programmer, you don't have to know any 
tool per se because you'll be the one developing tools. Uh, but however, you should have a skill of uh, programming languages. And uh, yeah, that depending on what uh, application you'd be developing, let's say if you are developing something for Maya, uh, it's good to learn uh, Python and uh, start developing a tool for that. And whereas like you asked, if you're an animator, you should have very good proficiency in Maya. And also let's say there is another application motion builder. So you should be good with both of those so that uh, that way you would be an animator. Uh, there is a question. What is the scope of 2D artists in India, like an illustrator or a concept artist? Uh, yeah, there there is a good demand, I guess, uh, for a concept artists because, uh, yeah, if, if you're a very good uh, concept artist, there are definitely people who hire. So, yeah, don't don't worry about that. Uh, is the game developer and the game programmer the same terms? Uh, not exactly. Game developer is much of a bigger role, and game programmer is someone who works on the game mechanics, and game de game developer works on an entire game altogether. So uh, again, uh, this, like I said, uh, developer is much of a bigger role when you describe, and programmer is. Uh, Again, I, I can't say there are a lot of differences because uh, different people tend to do both. So yeah, you can start off as a game programmer where you start understanding game uh, mechanics and work on them. And once you understand that, you would have to go to the next part, understanding, let's say, how the entire level is optimized and stores stuff. So yeah. Uh, there is a question, what does it take to be a great level designer and what are the qualities? Uh, I would say you should be uh, very good at uh, terrain generation and also understanding uh, and learning softwares. The, okay, for example here, okay, I can also introduce you to you guys a new application that's called Houdini. It's, a, it's an application used for uh, procedural level generation. So you can make use of that. And there are other softwares like uh, World Machine where you can generate a very, very big world for you. And that you can import it into Unreal or Unity or any application you might want. So yeah, so uh, you should have very good understanding on how to develop terrains and uh, a very good understanding on those things. So yeah, being, being an artist is the first thing there because uh, a game designer, or like, sorry, yeah, a level designer is uh, still an artist so you have to understand art and uh, as you progress you can also make it much of a bigger thing there is a question is it a nice option to start as a game tester as my first job uh, i would not say no but uh, if that's where your passion takes you you can definitely go ahead with it Uh, there's a question in game industry, which software is used most? Um, it's, it's a very, very broad question. Uh, so what kind of software, like are you, if you're talking about uh, softwares used to create 3D, 3D models and stuff, it again depends down the project you work with. There are a lot of people who use both Maya and Max. So uh, it's, it's very hard to differentiate them. Both, both have their uh, ups. I, I personally use both, so I like I, I prefer both of them. There there are scenarios where I still uh, prefer Maya because I've been using Maya the most. Uh, there's a question, can you please tell if you have created any softwares for game development? Uh, what, what kind of softwares are you asking?
There is a question, what is the difference between character animation artist and a gameplay programmer? So the programmer would uh, be working more on how the character would react on different occasions. And he would actually be making or calling different animations. So uh, there are they're quite, quite different uh, roles. So why is my preferred or Blender? Uh, maybe Blender is still reaching up there, I would say, because uh, personally, I've not looked at Blender much. Um, yeah, so I think give it a little time, then I think Blender would catch up. Uh, so was it a difficult call to join gaming industry after finishing your engineering? How did you convince your parents? That's a question. Uh, well, uh, lucky for me, my parents were uh, very, very kind to accept and agree to what I wanted to go ahead. They let me go ahead and pursue what I want. Again, they were not entirely happy until until I settled down. So yeah, so I, I would say uh, talk to your parents, make them understand and uh, for me, it's not a difficult call because uh, it's it's more where uh, my passion or my hobby and my work becomes one. So when you're working on something and you like it, you would not feel tired of it. So let's say if you're working even a lot, that, that would still put you up there where you are content in, in a very, very simple, very, very simple way of saying, uh, let's say after my work day, when I have to go to sleep, I would be relaxed. I, I would not have that regret in my mind saying, oh, I should have done that or, or I should have taken that now. So if, if you are clear in that scenario, I would definitely say go ahead. So yeah, convincing your parents, I think uh, I can't jump into each of your there. So yeah, again, uh, I think you can you can find a way to convince them. There, there are always uh, good ways to make them understand and help them on tell them the way how things are. Because uh, even if you look at the current situation of COVID, uh, the gaming industry is something where uh, people can are still working. And uh, here you don't need anything uh, physical, like you don't have to go somewhere and be there and be outside. The entire thing is a virtual creation. So the work is always going on. So it's, it's a, maybe we can say it's a kind of a evergreen kind of an industry here. Uh, there is a question for a fresher in gaming industry. What type of prof portfolio do we need? As if I'm working with 3D models, do I need a great work or can be a simple but detailed models? Uh, I would I would say uh, don't keep uh, a lot of work on your profile, like oh, you're always welcome, but also make sure each of the uh, model that you are showcasing on your profile uh, that's something you have given your utmost 100%. So even if you have less, if you have them perfect and well detailed and you're pretty much putting everything that you can and that, that should give all the talk. Basically your model would do the talking for you when the reviewer looks at your profile. Ah, favorite game. Uh, my favorite game keeps changing day to day or maybe once I finish working on the game. Sorry, like playing the game. Uh, for now, let's say uh, recently I've been playing uh, Red Dead. Like it's been quite some time though. And uh, personally, I'm a fan of Formula One. So I'm looking forward for uh, the upcoming F1 2020 game. And yeah, yeah, I, I play a lot of games. So I can't say there is one favorite game. Let's say if we go with Stealth, I have Hitman. So yeah, that's, that's a lot. I, I still have more. Yeah. What is the scope of uh, Unity developer in terms of job? If I'm a fresher, what kind of a job should I be applying for? Uh, if you are a Unity developer, I would say you would jump in as a game programmer most likely, or you can always start off with a technical artist then switch to game programming. That's uh, there, there's a 
there is a nice glide slope up there where you can start off as a technical artist and move up there. So yeah, uh, th there are definitely companies that would offer you those roles. And uh, again, you have freelance, so you can still work on your own portfolio, like you can develop your own games. Uh, one of them said, Mr. Webinar, they just joined. I think, uh, I believe this is being recorded, so you can always play it back and listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you play any games for fun? So basically, uh, gaming is an entertainment made like a kind of entertainment, like other than sitting and like, let's say you go to the ground, you play cricket or you play some other sport. So this is another mode of entertainment where you just sit in front of a computer and you play a game. So yeah, end of the day, uh, you play a game for fun. Or let's say if you want to get relaxed, there are different types of games. Like you have casual games like simulators. You have intense games like shooters and you have uh, a nice game where you can play with friends like online multiplayers and uh, if you have maybe one or two people you can let's say sit and play for example we me and few of my friends we play uh, until dawn like that was a long time ago though. so we all just sit down we put it up and that's more like a watching a movie but an interactive movie so yeah uh, it's yeah games are definitely fun yeah So uh, how do you plan to optimize a level and how do you do it? That's, uh, that's a long question. So let's say if you're working on a certain thing, it, you should also look at the requirements of uh, how much your engine would take up and how much big of a level you're dumping on this thing. Because if you're planning on hitting 60 FPS, you should make sure your level is well optimized. That means you should have a limit on the poly count and budget and you should also make sure everything is uh, having a good texture and the map maps so i i would say it start off with a uh, good poly count and map maps and you can go there go from there Uh, so there is a question, what is the role given to an artist in the gaming world? So uh, artist is a very uh, generic term. So if you're referring to a game artist, game artist would be someone who is developing 3D assets. There's a question, what is the basic pipeline used in the gaming industry? Uh, so here the pipeline is uh, slightly something that differs from project to project. It's depending on what kind of project you work for what engine you work. So uh, there is no set fixed pro pipeline per se. Your pipeline is kind of a little flexible here and there. So yeah, when, once you fall into a project, you would understand the pipeline there. But uh, to keep it very, very simple, let's say if you are someone who is an artist, you would do the modeling, then that will go on to uh, UE, then texture, then maybe you'll also have to add high poly, then, uh, then that would be pitched into a game engine, then that would be set up on a level that has to be optimized, then you would also have uh, a lighting and uh, so forth. There, there is still a lot more because of, like there's sound involved and there are uh, GUI, you have to have a heads up display and all the stuff. Is there a scope uh, for a game artist in Karnataka? Yeah, yeah, definitely there is. Are there any courses which I can learn in advance rigging like facial? Um, and I can't help you there much because I have not learned rigging per se. So um, yeah, if you want, you can uh, ping me offline. I can get you back with some details later. So there's a question, say if I had to join gaming studio that uses their own game engine, will I have to learn their own engine before joining or will the knowledge of Unity work through? Yeah. 
So uh, let's say if there are 10 or 20 game engines, the game engines, the way things work are something different, but the overall concept is always the same. So if you learn, let's say Unity Unreal, that should give you a very, very good start. And once you look at their engine, there are very little changes here and there, or even if there are changes, they are not to a degree where that would mean you have to learn everything from ground up. So yeah, uh, if you learn your uh, these engines like Unity Unreal, that should be a good start. And no, I don't think you'll be allowed to learn their engine before you join, because if the co company owns the engine, that would be inside the company. Okay, so since Unreal 5 has uh, features for dynamic mesh, how do you think it would change the ways we make games? I'm looking forward to it. It would definitely make a lot of change. So uh, it would be fun and interesting to see how things would be. One thing I'm really curious to see is uh, the way it was able to import 30 million uh, poly mesh from ZBrush into engine without any further issues or requirements. That's fun. It's actually a very, very uh, motivating thing to see happen. And uh, yeah, that's that's a very nice advancement we have. There's a question. Hi, sir. I completed uh, computer science engineering. Is there any extra course is needed for game development? Uh, I would uh, not say you have to go to any course. You can always uh, maybe uh, join any of the institutes or you could always uh, look up online to understand what all things are required. But yeah, since you have a CSC, uh, it, you have a good understanding of the computer concepts, like how the operating system is, how is what is memory, how memory works, and uh, what is C++ and all of those basics. So yeah, that, that, that should give you a good start, I hope. Yeah, and course, yeah, like I would not, say yes or no for a course, but uh, you should definitely understand the process of game development. Yep. So there's a question, animation and gaming field is new for me. So any guidance for me on how to start? So um, yeah, so just just understand how things work and what all things are uh, involved in the process of uh, the game development and design and see what is something that makes you more interested or which basically gives you that connection where you want to work on that particular aspect. and. Uh, you can you can start focusing on that. Yep. At least uh, that's how I've done. So for me, uh, when I was doing my engineering, my interest was uh, modeling. So I looked up around and I found gaming industry has an option where we can model. And then that's how I joined, I learned and I started picking off. Uh, there is a question. Have you made uh, tools for game development? Uh, I don't. I don't understand what game development there. Though, okay. Uh, let's say if you were referring to game engines or something. Yes, I have developed tools for game engines. So, uh, what kind of tools are we talking about to develop? Okay. Uh, is it possible you could refactor the question? That might help me understand. Uh, yeah, so have you made any tools for, uh, okay, tools are, okay. So the question is, have you made any tools like any softwares? Uh, yeah, there are, I have developed tools which are like softwares, like which are like applications you just run, execute and do different tasks in that.
Is mesh flow needed for 3D assets used in games? Um, yeah, me mesh flow basically makes it's it's more uh, yeah, mesh, mesh flow is required. Yes, I don't know how I can jump further, but maybe if I have an asset to see, I can refer it to you. Uh, is computer science engineering required before taking up the course for game development? Um, I would say computer science would give you a very good uh, exposure and information on how to take things further. It's more like uh, it'll give you enough concepts. But again, uh, since I believe you are doing 10th, so yeah, I would definitely uh, uh, suggest you finish off your uh, engineering and then you can jump on to here or you can take up any course that would give you a full insight of game development straight off. I, I cannot uh, say what the games have worked, sorry. What could be the pay scale? Um, that, that would depend on the company you join. Yeah. Which is a good place to learn game art online. Uh, maybe you can start off with uh, YouTube, then uh, there are some online courses like uh, Udemy. They might help, I guess. Uh, any best softwares to develop games on a computer and run in Android mobile? So when you're developing a game, you can also choose to which you want to develop it for. So yeah, you can develop a game in Unity or Unreal and uh, once it's uh, like when you're finishing your build, you can always uh, push it to one of these things. So um, yeah, all in all, uh, let's say I've been working, I uh, started off as a, again, as a game artist and uh, I progressed my career like so. And again, it's, uh, it's an amazing journey. It's, uh, it's ups and downs. Again, no one's uh, journey is smooth as butter. You'll always have ups and downs and you have, that's life and you have to learn things. Again, one good thing is uh, there are a lot of companies that will teach you so many things. So yeah, it's it's a it's a good uh, career path to choose. It's a nice one. Yep. And uh, I right now I'm working in uh, Technicolor India. Well, uh, I hope that answers your questions. And uh, thank you so much. <laughs>